second one on the left, Bonnie, on the right screen where it says use slideshow up on the upper left? Toward the top. Go up. No, no, go back, Bonnie. You're hitting the wrong one. Hold on. Thought we were ready, but we're not. <sighs> see with that thing in the way. I can't tell where I'm at. Ah, that's not it. Okay, it's not gonna function. Okay, go ahead and close out. Hit escape. I knew this was gonna happen. Close down PowerPoint over here. Close it down. No, the red X. This is gonna be a major issue. thing in the way. Where's my mouse? Okay, we're just gonna have to go with it. I'm just gonna have to work with it. Okay, that's what I'm gonna have to go with. That's all I can do. I don't know what's going on. Well, we're going live, but unfortunately we're having issues with PowerPoint this morning, so I'm gonna do the best I can. Unfortunately, the slideshow is not going to be as great as I'd like it to be. I'm not sure why it's doing it, but I will have to work on it this week. So, happy Sabbath. Welcome, everybody. Uh, today is our first Facebook Live. We are actually live right now. So, anybody who's on live right now, welcome. Happy Sabbath to you guys. Uh, today, we're ending up June. I know we were supposed to take care of something regarding Sabbath school today. Byron's not here. Uh, so, I'm not really sure what we're going to do about that. So, we're not going to worry about that. So, um, what I would like to start out with is a word of prayer, and then we'll get into the sermon. Gracious Father in Heaven, today is going to be a warm one, but the good news is there is relief on the horizon. 70s and 60s, the next couple days, it'll be nice. But Lord, thank you most of all that we're here. We're here together as a family, as friends. Lord, we love the fact that you've given us a day like the Sabbath that allows us to rela relax and rest and fellowship with fellow believers and also to get closer and come back to you. Lord, as we go through the service today and as we go through our lives, help us to focus on you and focus on those around us. Guide and direct our paths, Lord. We ask these in your heavenly name. Amen. So, let me unmute myself on the other one here. Today we're going to talk about Help Wanted Ads. Those of us, which pretty much everybody in this room outside of the one in the back there, we've all actually at some point in our life read an actual physical newspaper. Good for fly swatters, good for other things as well. So I thought it would be kind of neat to go through a process of a different type of want to add. And it's along the line of what would happen if heaven had an HR department and needed to put out an ad. So we're going to start with a couple from history that I really like. The guy you see on the screen 
Nice guy, Ernest Shackleton, nice explorer, failed miserably on getting to the South Pole, but he tried. He actually took out a Help Wanted ad back in the day. I thought this was kind of interesting. And it reads, because obviously we can't get full screen here, men wanted for hazardous journey, small wages, definitely sign me up for that one, bitter cold, long months of complete darkness, constant danger, safe return very doubtful, honor and recognition in case of success. <laughs> hmm, anybody else want to sign up for that one? This next one's kind of interesting because I couldn't figure out what they were talking about, but it's kind of interesting. It says, wanted, young, skinny, wiry fellows, not over the age of 18, must be expert riders, willing to risk death daily, orphans preferred. There you go. Didn't come up with that, so I didn't know. This should look familiar to a few people here, riding the range. This one pays a lot of money, really does. So you get to be a trail boss. You get to lead a crew of 12 men from Texas up to Kansas, 1,500 cattle. You're going to be responsible for not only making decisions for the best welfare of the animals, the cowboys, handling of money, and paying the crew. And for all these duties of being up from sunrise to sundown on the occasional night watch, you get paid a whole whopping 125 bucks a month. But you don't get paid until the job's done. This one I found kind of interesting, and this was from England, and it says, wanted. Experienced trailer driver, must be sober and reliable. Preferably married, but not absolutely essential. Good wages for the right man. Huh? I don't know. It was in England from the 1840s, so we didn't have trucks back then. So now we get to the HR department in heaven. So God has decided that he wants to aid his return a little bit by putting out a help wanted ad. And I put in a email address for the HR department, which is Jesus Christ at nemail.heaven. Or you can just cry out to him. Either one will get his attention. Now, every, every help wanted ad, they always tell you, you must have the following qualifications. Now, here's the interesting thing with God, though. You don't have to have every qualification on this list. Because if you did, at some point in our lives, we've probably all had these. But to have them all at the same time, be a little overwhelming. Since we can't read them up on the screen, unfortunately, because I can't get the things to work, I'm going to read them to you. And you only have to fit in one of them. And you don't have to raise your hand or anything. Just take a listen. Hard worker. Diligent. Faithful, honest, failing, sinner, broken, introvert, extrovert, happy, sad, quiet, boisterous, leader, follower, alone, family, single, married, old, young, middle age, blind, lame, bankrupt, rich, Humble, proud, adventurous, safe, burdened, free, sick, healthy, small town, big city, depressed, addicted, anger, or human. As long as you fit one of those, you're qualified. Seems pretty easy on paper, though. But here's where we get to the job description. And we reference back to Jesus when he was talking about people and what they would have to do for the kingdom. This first one is, you must be willing to serve at a moment's notice because you never know when God's going to call upon you. You could get woken up just in the middle of the night just to pray for somebody. You could be driving down the highway, have to pull over because it's more important. These are things that you never know when the time is going to come for you to have to serve. Must be willing to leave obligations to fulfill duties of job. That means if he tells you to quit your job, might be a good idea. I mean, obviously you want to pray about it. Obviously you want to make sure because, you know, that kind of puts food on the table. But obviously he has a better plan for you. 
This one's huge. You must be willing to put the master before everything. In other words, he is your pri excuse me, he is your priority now. You must be willing to give all. Everything you have is his. You have it because he's given it to us. We aren't blessed with what we have in life because we earned it. This goes back to what I talked about a minute ago. Must sacrifice self for the kingdom. This is a big one for humans. We struggle with this one. Must not worry about what others think of you. That's a tough one. I was in the mall yesterday picking up a cord so we could do the live stream today. I kid you not, there was three of us in the entire mall not wearing masks. Three of us. You'd have thought I basically brought Ebola to Boise. I mean, we got the death stares. And it was like, okay, I'm just going to get my stuff and I'm going to get out of here. But I didn't worry about it because I was there to do a job. I was there to get what I needed to go and I was gone. I wasn't going to hang out. I wasn't going to sit around for hours. I just had a job to do and I went there. Now here's the big key. Must be you. God wants us to be us. He doesn't want us to be anybody else. We don't have to put on airs for him. We don't have to do anything else. Just be us. And just when you think that's it, no, 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 no. There's more. Serve the master in acts of kindness and compassion. That's difficult for somebody like me. I will tell you this. I am not the most touchy-feely guy. I'm just not. Um, I don't shed a lot of tears. In fact, I pretty much don't. Um, but that's not what all kindness and compassion is. It's being able to put others and their situation and what they need ahead of what you think you need. And that boils into this one. Serving others by attending their needs. Not just physical, not mental, not just emotional. Spiritual included. Our job is to aid others to get to the kingdom. This is one that when we were younger, we probably did. I know Ethel and Doyle have done it. Called upon to learn, uh, sorry, may need to go to foreign lands or new places, be so uncomfortable, you wonder what you signed up for. Especially when there's a language barrier. And you're sitting there trying to communicate and you're trying to do a job. And if you don't have an interpreter or the interpreter's sick or whatever, it can be a struggle. And you wonder sometimes, okay, why did you bring me here? But there is a reason. There's always a reason. And that goes into need to, if called upon, to learn new languages and cultures to bring more people into the kingdom. Because that's what it's all about, is bringing people into the kingdom. We have to sometimes give everything up and sell it all, just like he told the young ruler. Sell all, give to the poor, and follow me. How many, don't want to show of hands, how many of you could honestly say, with self-respect you know, and self-reflection, could say, yeah, I could sell everything I have just for the kingdom? Be hard. This day and age, it's very difficult. Give your time and energy when you have none left to give. As we get older, we don't have a lot of energy. We don't. We get up in the morning and we're just like, we sound like a Rice Krispie commercial. Snap, crackle, pop. But yet, we get up. We do our jobs. We serve the kingdom. This is a big one. Be open to the criticism that you're not doing your job properly. Hmm. It has to do with church offices. Could be what you're doing in the world in terms of witnessing. Because people will always criticize what you do no matter what you do. This is a big one. Be available at all hours because you never know when he's going to call upon you. This is a big one for the church. This is something we struggle with, not only in the church, but at home. Working with people you may not like or may not like you. Because there's always those people that are willing to outwardly show they're not a big fan of you. But it's not about them. It's about God. The mission. It's about the kingdom. 
And that's when we need to spend lots of time in humble supplication. And we don't have to be on our knees. It's a metaphor. I mean, if I get on my knees, I'm not getting back up. It's hard. I'll tell you, it's hard. I'll just be honest. We get to spend time knowing your neighbors, getting to know who's around you. You know, we're kind of fortunate in Mountain Home, Glens Ferry, King Hill, Hammett, Grandview. Small towns. Real easy to get around and know people. I mean, you can literally make Mountain Home from one end to the other in 12 minutes. If you walk it, two hours. So it's not hard. Glens Ferry, I don't know, five minutes. It's not hard to get to know people around you. And sometimes that's the best witness. Just get to know your neighbors. Spend time in the world communicating the will of the Father. That's huge. Sharing His plan of salvation when it's necessary, which is pretty much 24-7. We need to be able to tell people, yes, this is important. Because we want them there. We don't want anybody left behind. This one's a good one. Learning new skills. Every day the Lord teaches us things. Working with children. And I'm not just referring to the physical sense. I'm referring to spiritual children. Those that are new to the faith. Those that are fresh. Those that are still learning. And rather than chastising them, rather than saying, oh, well, it'll come in time, help them along that journey. Help them along that walk. Don't just push them out the back door. Take time to spend with them and say, where's your question? And if you don't know the answer, or if you can't find the answer, reach out to others. There's a few people in this church, more than just one or two, so there are other people that you can reach out to. And here's the hardest one for us. We are just a small part of the bigger picture. It's not all about us, no matter what we think. So the next thing that most of the time is not covered in a classified ad. It's kind of interesting because you don't usually find out about it till either the interview or until you're hired. But since it's God and you're pretty much you know, good to go here, He's going to go ahead and tell you your benefits for being a child of God. First one, peace both in the heart and in the mind. Anything the world and Satan decides to throw at you, he's got you. He's holding you. He sometimes carries us. It's interesting that when you look back at all the times in our lives, when we were at the darkest, most downtime in our lives, we got through it. Sometimes we don't know how, but sometimes we do. I have a friend of mine who basically was addicted, but he didn't realize he was addicted. In his mind, it was normal for him. It was a normal life. He got up in the morning, he did what he did, and he would sometimes not know anything for two, three, four days. But to him, that was normal. It wasn't until somebody spent time with him to show him a different normal that he found peace because he missed out on so much during those times of the addiction. Here's a big one, something I'm looking forward to, eternal life. We get to spend eternity with the Father, learning at His feet, seeing the entire universe from a new perspective each and every day we're there. The big key for me is the learning, being able to understand the perspective of God we can try to understand a little snippet here on earth, but in our human mind, we're just, we're not there. We try, but understanding, the biggest struggle I see with a lot of humans and a lot of Christians is why didn't God help us? Why didn't God save that person? Why did God allow that to happen? So we look and we concentrate on the small picture instead of the big picture, because there is a reason for everything. For everything that occurs, for everything that happens, God has a reason. Amen. Who all has got a family here? Anybody? Nobody? A family. Everybody's got a family, I hope. But think about the size of the family of God. Think about how big that is. It goes back, Adam and Eve. And if you start counting math, which I like to do math, it's in the trillions of humans that have been on this earth over the years. And can you imagine 
add the unfallen worlds, add the angels. When we get to heaven, that's a huge family. Lots of big family reunion coming up. It's going to be awesome. But here's the thing. The family here that's on earth, we're all trying to strive to get to heaven. That's the common goal. Right here, right now, that's our goal. Hastening the return of God. Because I don't want to be here any longer than I have to be. This is a big one. Everybody has one of these. It's a guidebook. It's called the Bible. It answers every question you have, even the most difficult. You may not know where to look, but somebody does. But it's there. It's a blueprint for our lives. And there is no difference between the Old Testament and New Testament. They are both proving each other. There is no, oh, well, he died on the cross of the Old Testament. Yeah, we just follow 13. Eh, don't need it. But without the Old, the New Testament does not stand alone. It cannot. And the vice versa. You need both. Just like in a marriage, you need both parties to work together. Just like in a family, everybody has a part to play. And in the Bible, the Old and the New Testament. So, everybody's heard of a great retirement plan that, well, I'm being sarcastic here, but it's called the 401k. God has something better. It's called the 401h. Pretty sure everybody can figure out what that stands for. But, this plan, which is awesome, it offers the following. No sickness, no matter what the season or conditions. Allergies, gone. Don't have to worry about it. No sneezing, no corona, no death hornets, no nothing. It's awesome. Here's a good one. No death. 